If you're concerned about consuming endocrine disruptors, uh, rancid toxins, and mineral chelators that are gonna strip your body of the essential vitamins and minerals that it needs, then you may wanna consider taking nuts out of your diet. Nuts contain certain compounds that suppress reproductive hormone production, and they contain large amounts of the notorious mineral chelator phytic acid, as well as other anti-nutrients. The nutritional value of eating certain nuts is next to none, since the metabolizability has been vastly overestimated. So in today's video, we're gonna explore the evidence to demonstrate all of these claims. This is peer-reviewed medical evidence that I'm, gonna, that I'm gonna report on today. And by the end of this video, you're gonna realize that if you wanna be healthy, you should probably stop consuming nuts. First off, I think it's really important that we identify what being healthy truly means. Now, a lot of people don't actually think about this. They just think that, you know, they hear something, they're like, oh, this is healthy, that's healthy, that sort of thing. But what does healthy actually mean? Well, if you look at the body and the way that foundationally the human body works, you know, this is not following some, you know, dietary dogma or that sort of thing. We're approaching this objectively. How does the human body work properly? Where does it come into the best state of health? There are two conditions that are always met. The first one is micronutrient deficiencies are always corrected. So your body has all the vitamins and all the minerals that it needs to function properly from the cellular level all the way up through the tissues, the organs, organ systems, et cetera, to fuel an amazing, um, you know, all the metabolic and hormonal processes in the organism uh, so that you are healthy. Your body really truly needs this stuff and this is just basic biochemistry. It can't be refuted. Now the second thing that the body needs to be in a state of true health is actually hormonal um, balance. So hormonal balance is defined by basically the ratios between certain protective hormones and stress hormones. Now these are the two classes of hormones in the body so you need to lump them together. The protective hormones are, are uh, typically you know, all the reproductive hormones, things that are going to encourage reproduction, uh, as well as the thyroid hormones, things that are helping with uh, you know, metabolic energy flow through the body. And then the, uh, the stress hormones, on the other hand, are th you know, it's kind of self-explanatory what a stress hormone is, cortisol being the big one that everyone knows, but estrogen is also a stress hormone, prolactin is as well, and uh, things like SHPG, things that are basically going to take away from the reproductive hormone function. And what you find in the research is that these stress hormones almost always act antithetically to the protective hormones. So um, the ratios really matter. So if you disagree with this, this view of health, then you know, we're gonna dis disagree on a foundational level what true health really is. And if you are disagreeing with this view of health, you have to understand that what you're saying is you think the body functions properly with deficiencies. Uh, you're also saying you think the body functions uh, properly with a state of hormonal imbalance. And if you think that, then we just fundamentally disagree and I'll uh, wish you good luck. But if you agree with me, that these two conditions must be met, then that what that does is it gives us a framework to operate within. And when we're operating within this framework, it helps us to truly identify what foods are healthy and what foods are not healthy. So by doing that and looking at the available evidence within this framework, we can see that nuts are in fact not healthy. And I'm gonna show you the research today. So if you wanna learn more about my nutritional recommendations and an exact plan of how you should eat to optimize your hormones and correct micronutrient deficiencies so you have massive increase in energy, improved metabolism, deep sleep, amazing libido, and a lean and muscular body, I've put together a short quiz tool for you over at thethermodiet.com quiz. 
By answering just a few simple questions about your cravings, fat storage, and key things like whether or not you have cold extremities, this tool is able to tell me exactly which body type you are and which organ, between the liver, the thyroid, and the pituitary, you need to heal in order to bring your body into a state of perfect health. Go take the quiz for yourself at thethermodiet.com slash quiz. Now, let's dive into this research. So first, let's look at the anti-nutrient co uh, content in nuts. So here, right here, we got a table of all of the anti-nutrients in nuts. Uh, right here, this confirms that a type of almond actually is uh, anti-nutritive and actually indigestible. So this shows the anti-nutrient quality of nuts and claims that all seeds are unable to meet any nutritional requirements for animals except for magnesium when it comes to minerals. Boom. So the argument basically right there, this defeats the argument that people say, oh, nuts and seeds have so many nutrients in them. The thing is, there's so many anti-nutrients in them too that you cannot actually absorb any of the nutrients except for magnesium. So nuts are also extremely high in a compound known as phytic acid. And I've talked a lot about phytic acid here on the channel. Um, I'm doing, you know, kind of a series of different different videos on uh, the, the foods that are really high in phytic acid because it's a mineral chelator. It's a very, very strong mineral chelator. And in this medical di dictionary definition right here, you see that it says this is a strong mineral chelator that can cause also constipation. Um, right here, we have a list of uh, some foods that contain large amounts of phytic acid. And you see that nuts are very, very prevalent on that list. The study shows that because of the dense nature of the negative phosphate groups when consumed, uh, the phytic acid actually attaches to mineral ions, rendering them unavailable for uptake by the body. Uh, you know, and this this is part of the the chief reason why none of the minerals, uh, none of the micronutrients that are in nuts are actually even bioavailable to humans. So this states that phytic acid has a strong chelating property and allows for poor bioavailability in the ga gastrointestinal tract of multivalent metal ions, especially zinc, calcium, and iron, so it's blocking those things. Uh, this talks about how phytic acid renders many essential minerals to be poorly bioavailable. It also talks about the mechanism and even talks about how it combined to proteins in certain pH levels. Now on page 212 of this book, it states that the fact that the strong chelating effect of phytic acid is very important to note, and it shows that it forms insoluble compounds with many essential minerals, including copper, cobalt, magnesium, manganese, zinc, calcium, and iron. This talks a bit about the chemistry with the calorimetric study with several minerals and their binding potential with phytic acid. The study was shown to cause an increase in excretion of minerals, nitrogen, and amino acids with phyto phytic acid consumption. Uh, this one showed that sodium phytate actually decreased the pepsin activity, uh, it's important in enzyme, in the digestion of, of uh, protein. This study showed a dose-dependent manner of uh, phytic acid consumption causing inhibition of lipase activity. And this last section of this part of this study shows that uh, you can see the results about a massive in, uh, increase in inhibition of pepsin as, as the phytic acid is increased. And then uh, this one showed the inhibitory effect of uh, phytic acid on alpha amylase and proteases. It's basically a super powerful anti-nutrient and anti-enzymatic uh, compound. So one of the main problems with nuts is, uh, in general, across the board, they all have very high PUFA content. You know, in the past, I've recommended uh, certain nuts, like uh, Brazil nuts, um, you know, because they're very high in selenium, for example. But I'm actually starting to reverse my thinking about it. I think all nuts should be avoided, to be honest. Um, they have very large amounts of toxic PUFAs. All of them do. So uh, let's look at PUFAs. So in this table, you can see... Um, you know, the PUFA content per 200 calories serving of nuts. Uh, this study right here supports the idea that the higher the PUFA intake, the lower the maximum lifespan for mammals. And they basically what they said was the maximum lifespan indeed decreases as the ratio of uh, you know, omega-3 to omega-6 PUFAs increases. The study showed that the polyunsaturates exposed to neural tissue in embryonic chicks during various stages of development could impair neural development. They also stated that glucagon naturally suppressed mobilization within the fetus, stating, for example, at day 18 of development, the proportions of fatty acids of uh, the omega-3s released into the incubation medium were respectively 6.5 and 7.5 times higher than in the original tissue tag. Glucagon stimulated the overall rate of mobilization by approximately twofold and also partially suppressed the preferential mobilization of C20 to 22 polyunsaturates. Well, this study showed that the consumption of PUFA from arachidonic acid and eicosapentaenoic acid 
in a dose-dependent manner increase the vascular permeability of the vascular system within the brain. And they, they did that by increasing free radical damage that was caused by the breakdown of the fatty acids. If you want to learn more about this, watch my PUFA video. Watch the vegetable oil conspiracy video. I talk all about this in great detail. Now, the study states that the prevalence of an increased uh, omega-6 diet uh, is, is very negative and causes diabetic symptoms. It causes insulin resistance from eating these PUFAs. It also refers to the increased prevalence of free radicals with the increased PUFA consumption. This study showed a direct link between polyunsaturated fatty acids and reduced function of the exportation of fats out of the liver from the regulation of uh, hepatic apolipoprotein B degradation and VLDL production. So basically um, causing uh, you know, PUFA consumption causing, causing uh, fatty liver. So this was a, actually quite a massive study that had over 4,000 controls that showed the association between the, the PUFA intake and IBS, Crohn's, and ulcerative colitis. So it has this inflammatory damage potential on the gut. So this study showed that there might be an inverse correlation uh, toward an early memory uh, in pre-birth infants and early exposure to PUFA. So basically the PUFA exposure in, um, you know, in pre-birth infants actually damaged their brain, it damaged their memory capacity. So this study showed how PUFA caused an efflux of calcium ions from the mitochondria inhibiting the function of the mitochondria, so basically damaging the cells. Uh, this study showed the effect of PUFA exposure on uh, altering steroidogenesis, or the, the production of uh, reproductive hormones, steroid hormones, and an increase in glucocorticoids uh, from the adrenal gland. This is also a stimulation of uh, adrenocorticotropic horm hormones. So you're seeing, again, what I said, the ratio of, of uh, protective to to uh, stress hormones has to be high. What this does is it reverses that. It's increasing stress hormones and lowering protective hormones. So let's talk. Let's look a bit more right now. We're going to look at some research showing the impact on um, the hormones and on health in general from things like the polyunsaturated fatty acids, which are very, very high in all nuts. So this study shows that there is a direct inverse correlation between the amount of daily total energy consumption coming from polyunsaturated fatty acids and testosterone production. In a dose-dependent manner, the more of the total energy consumption of fat that came from polyunsaturated fats, the lower the testosterone levels. This study showed that there was a positive correlation between men who are on a vegetarian diet, which is higher in PUFAs, and SHBG, versus those who were on an omnivorous diet who had significantly less SHBG. The conclusion was that the vegetarian group of men who were eating the higher polyunsaturated fat diet had significantly less testosterone available for the androgen receptor sites. This uh, study published in the prestigious journal Nature uh, showed that both almonds and walnuts increase SHBG. So this one states that there are significant threats to growth in the health of animals that consume high amounts of lectins, which are also very high in nuts. So this states that nuts have a lower digestibility and cause problems within, um, you know, like actually getting the energy out of almonds. And this is what I'm saying earlier. They have so many anti-nutrients, you can't actually access the nutrients and the energy consumption of, of the, the food itself. So this shows that there's actually a massive overestimization of the metabolizability of walnuts again from the anti-nutrient content. This shows nutrient displacement in men with walnut supplementation in the diet. This states that tannins have detrimental effects. There's a lot of tannins in these nuts. Uh, this states that around 70% of iron and 75% of copper are not bioavailable in cashews. Again, uh, you can't actually access a lot of the nutrients that are in these things. Uh, if you watch you know, my video on, on the flax seeds, I talk a bit about this and just phytic acid in general. Phytic acid is a mechanism for the plant to actually get minerals to the plant, but it protects itself. So, you, so humans can't actually digest or get access to a lot of the minerals that the phytic acid is collecting in that plant. So it's, it's a protective mechanism for the plant. So this states that 75% of kidney stones are actually from calcium oxalate, that nuts are a rich source of it. This looks at the bioavailability of metals in several different nuts, and uh, you know, bio bioavailability is not very high of anything in nuts. Uh, the, this shows that hazelnuts and walnuts are good for attaching to lead. Uh, this confirms that chickpeas are full of protease inhibitors, amylase inhibitors, phytolectins, polyphenols, and oligosaccharides. So uh, there's a lot of these uh, like important enzyme, enzyme inhibitors in uh, things like chickpeas, which also I think they're a legume. But, um, you know, that's another one. I did one on beans. You can check that out. Um, this one shows some negative side effects of saponins, which are high in nuts. 
Uh, this looks in depth more at the saponins and some potential uh, side effects of the high doses of sa saponins. Uh, confirmed again by cytotoxicity of saponins in this study. This one shows adverse effects of the oxalates binding to minerals when being eaten. Uh, this one showed lower oxalate level intake helped reduce kidney stone recurrence. This one shows a correlation between calcium oxalate content and kidney stones. This one shows a correlation of oxalates to increases in vulvodynia. This one uh, showed that people with IBS are at more risk for developing kidney stones with calcium oxalate. And again, just to reiterate, nuts are very high in this stuff. This one shows that people with Crohn's disease are also at higher risk for kidney stones with calcium oxalate. This shows no role for oxalate in man in the development of kidney stones. Okay, so there's we've got a little, you know, uh, pushing back a little bit. However, there's a lot of other ones showing the opposite of that. Uh, this one talks about mycotoxicity of U.S. processing and nuts being one of the biggest ones that have that have a lot of mycotoxins. They're very rich in this this uh, this toxin, and um, they contribute to things like kidney tumors. This one shows the mycotoxin aflatoxin can lead to liver cancer. This one shows that peanuts are high in mycotoxins and they cause chronic disease. Uh, this one um, shows how Australia has a major aflatoxin problem with peanuts. Uh, so if you're in Australia, don't eat peanuts. Probably just in general don't eat peanuts, uh, which are legumes too, kind of like a nut legume. There's a bit of a gray line between the nuts and legumes. Uh, this one shows that peanuts are prevalent for aflatoxins and relates to an increase of liver disease. This one shows synergistic effects of aflatoxin and HP, HPV virus. virus. Uh, this one shows that aflatoxin can induce cancer initiation. This one shows a link of aflatoxin and liver cancer. So we're seeing like some cancer correlations here. And then this one shows that several mycotoxins in peanuts and peanut products uh, are very prevalent as well as other nuts and grains. So again, if you're a bit confused after this in terms of, I mean, for some people, we've, we've all, we all grow up thinking like, oh, nuts are healthy for us because everyone just tells us nuts are healthy for us. But, you know, sometimes when you face the truth, it kind of flips your world upside down. So if you're a bit confused, again, go, um, I made that tool over at thethermodiet.com slash quiz that'll help you to identify what you need to work on, whether it's your liver, your, your thyroid, or your pituitary, and how we can get you on a path that will help you to correct those issues naturally using nutrition in this framework of, of improving your micronutrient levels, getting them all corrected, and then improving your hormonal balance uh, by you know eating certain foods and avoiding other foods, for example, like nuts. So um, if you need some of that help, go check it out. It's at the thermodiet.com slash quiz. Check it out. If you like this channel, uh, support me, uh, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment with other topics you'd like to learn about, and I will do the research and I'll show you the truth. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. This toxic substance is actually used in almost every major restaurant or even just like small restaurants around the world.